Okay, so we're, I just recorded, um, we're, this is our fourth recording overall, and uh, it's December 9th, 2021. Um, I was just saying that when we left off uh, last time, when we were just talking, we had been doing a lot of uh, Google uh, map and looking at your neighborhood. And, oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, South, South, South Los Angeles. And yeah. you, that was like too. a time trip. Yes. That was like a time trip for me. And we'd also, you'd also alluded to um, you at some point um, in early childhood, I believe you had moved and you uh, alluded to someone named Harry. That was uh, a Harry Jr. Yeah, where, where did I leave off on that? You didn't tell me anything. You we you started oh, to tell me about I, okay. you moved I, to I, Bell I, and Harry Judy, and then I okay, I distracted I us. I remember. <laughs> okay, uh, when my dad went to you, we've already we've already moved out to California. Uh, yep. Apparently, my father, sister, my aunt Molly. Uh, you know the story about them coming out here to establish a cleaning business. Well, uh, yeah, you told me that last yeah, time. Okay. Anyway, Aunt Molly got my dad a job as a an agent for the Metropolitan Life Insurance Company. And I think I reiterated how he would go out and uh, collect premiums, try to sell insurance etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, there was also he met a fellow in the office his name was Harry Stepner uh, they lived out in Bell California uh, we were living well actually I jumped a little ahead of myself we were that time we were living on 67th Street, we had moved there. I, uh, and uh, hold it, it's, we lived on 67th Street in 1933. We haven't arrived at 1933 yet. Uh, we had just moved to <laughs> California. Okay, uh, um, I gotta sort my head out. Uh, we, were, we were living in the court where we left off, we had a picture of that. The uh, it looks very much like I I remember it. And uh, the Stepners lived in Bell. Uh, apparently, uh, he, he, Harry Stepner apparently talked my dad and let's let's move out to Bell. So we. We moved to Bell, California, and, uh, and lived on a street, coincidentally named Corona Street in Bell. And I went to, transferred from Budwong Avenue Elementary to Corona Avenue Elementary in Bell, California. Uh, Harry Jr was married, married out of his faith. He was married to actually a Catholic girl named, named Isla. Her maiden name was Aubrey, Isla Aubrey. And of course, when they got married, she became Isla Stepner. And they had a son that uh, was two months younger than me, Harry Jr. And, uh, we kind of grew up together. Uh, this was in uh, probably 19, late 1930. Well, let's see, we moved out here in 31. This was late in 1931 or early in 1932. And uh, we moved out to Corona Street uh, in a, uh, a uh, again, in a small court in Bell, but there's only about uh, five or six uh, units in it. Uh, 
Harry and I went to school together. He 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 was half a grade ahead of me. Uh, thanks to Mrs. Dunlap at Budlong Avenue School. And uh, yes. one of the things I, I remember about uh, Corona Avenue School is they had a harmonica band. Uh, they had a, a small U music department and uh, uh, somehow or other I got in the band. I didn't know how to play harmonica, but many of the youngsters in there did. So uh, nobody played individually, everybody played together. And <clears throat> some of the songs we played, you could actually understand uh, what they were. And the, and the group, I didn't know a toot about playing a harmonica then. But actually, by the time I left, I could, uh, I was what, uh, 32, I was about eight or nine years old then. I, I could uh, fashion out a tune I, uh, strictly by ear. They, they didn't try to teach us to read music. Okay, back to Harry Jr. now. I'm bringing uh, a harmonica next time I see you, by the way. What? I'm gonna bring a harmonica next, next time I see you, I'm gonna bring a harmonica. I'm okay. Gonna, I, wanna see, I wanna see if you can play it. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. Oh, do you actually have one there? I've never heard you play a harmonica. I don't think. Well, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not sure I can play it. See, so you do. You, you actually. Okay, it's probably been 20 years since I played this. <laughs> okay. Well, it, it didn't come through very, I could, I could kind of hear, it didn't come through very well through the microphone, which is what? possibly a reason for a new mic. It, it, I it, it could didn't, only it hear. didn't come through? Did you hear it? It, it uh, parts of it. I could tell what you're playing. I could tell, that was great, that was great. <laughs> The microphone dims out if it gets too, so it was. It's the computer, not you. Well, I, I, I can't think of, of anything to play. That's okay. It's not, that was great. That was fantastic. I'm glad we uh, <laughs> got to uh, see that. Can, can, you want me to play it again so you get a better recording or something? No, no, no. The recording was fine. It's the microphone that will, uh, it'll probably do the exact same oh, thing. Oh, okay. It Our it? microphone. It's your computer really microphone. All right. It, it, it dims out when it gets too loud. The microphone compensates by trying to make it uh, less okay. loud. And well, it, 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 it was, it was a great recording. If I get a little though. further away, maybe it'll work better. I'm Let's not sure. It. Uh, go for it. I'm a, Was that better? That was a little bit better. That was great. I'll take two opportunities to watch you play harmonica. That's pretty cool with me. Okay. Again, it's probably been 20 years since since I've had this open. Uh, I, I, I guess my brain memory is still pretty good. Yeah, I, I, I would. Uh, okay. I would agree with so that. That's no no arguments from me. Actually, actually, I was I, I I was pretty good. I played by ear. I could play. I could hear a song, and I could uh, once I heard it once or twice, I could play it. 
and it, it's also it's it's chromatic. I can get sharps and flats on it too. Okay, let's get back to Harry Jr. Cool. Uh, in a in a sense, we grew up together. Uh, sometime we didn't live in Bell very long. Sometime in late '32 or very early in 1933, we moved back into Los Angeles on 67th Street. Uh, I, I went, I, I re-enrolled in Budlong Avenue School, which was on 59th. Now, before we lived on, uh, on 62nd Street or six, 61st or 62nd, I forget very uh, which, and it wasn't a very long walk to school, but now we lived on 67th Street. So I had about six, seven or eight blocks uh, to walk to school. We lived on 67th between Vermont and Budlong, only further south. So I used to have Ed, uh, Ed, head west on 67th to Budlong, uh, turn right to go north and walk six or seven long blocks to school. Okay, now let's talk about something very interesting. Uh, March 10th, 1933. I, I, I came home from school and somehow I was, I don't remember, I was in possession of a pocket knife. Now, uh, I'm, I'm nine years old and uh, I'm in the pocket and I get home from the school and it's an evening. My dad hasn't gotten home from work yet, I don't think. And uh, Shirley, my sister Shirley and I were out in, in the front yard. I don't know what, remember what she was doing, but I had opened the knife and I was trying to stick the knife in the ground, you know. <laughs> You flip it with my finger, it spin over a couple of times and then in the ground. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't start off very good at it. I kept doing it and all of a sudden, uh, a couple of times, it would flip it, sit, the uh, knife would spin and then stick in the ground. But one time, uh, I flip it, stuck it in the ground and I was starting to feel pretty good about it when I, when I heard it. Uh, a, a slight boom and the ground underneath me moved in one direction that I wasn't expecting. And it kind of caught me off balance and knocked me, knocked me down. And I'm looking at the knife. This happened just as I uh, dug the knife in the, stuck the knife in the ground for what the heck is going on? And then the earth moved the other way and then back and forth. And then it got violent. Uh, I didn't know what it was, and uh, I would very quickly uh, found out that we were in an earthquake, March 10th, 1933. Uh, Which was the name of that earthquake? What? Do you remember? Do you remember what the name of that earthquake was? Uh, the Long Beach earthquake. Actually, oh, that was a long yeah, earthquake. actually, it, it was a fault that... Uh, that slipped in the Long Beach area. Uh, we were we were maybe eighteen or twenty miles uh, from Long Beach, but uh, we 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 sure we sure felt it. Uh, yeah, I'm reading about it now. It's it was a six point four magnitude. Okay. It, it, it was a six point six plus magnitude quake. Yeah, that, it says 6.4 6. Uh, from what I'm reading. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't remember if my dad was home before it happened, but somehow uh, after the earthquake, I remember we got in the car. Uh, there was no electricity. There were no telephones. We got in the car and we drove to Aunt Molly's. Uh, I, I, I remember this was, uh, again, March 10th. It was still light. 
somehow we got to Aunt Molly's. I could, we went past some of the buildings on Vermont Avenue. We, on Vermont Avenue, were going north towards 62nd Street. And we could see some of the buildings, the bricks had come off. There was uh, glass in the street. Uh, it, 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 it was, it was a, a small sort of mess. Uh, we didn't see any any electric wires down or telephone poles down. We, we finally got to Aunt, Aunt Molly's and uh, they had electricity. They had electricity that I remember. They didn't have it very long. <coughs> we went in the house and uh, uh, every, you know, every, everybody was upset about it. Uh, we, uh, uh, the older people, somehow they couldn't, uh, we couldn't accept what an earthquake was, didn't really know what an earthquake was. Uh, and then uh, we started getting aftershocks. And uh, that was the story of the earthquake. Uh, my memories of what happened after that are uh, a little bit dim, but uh, let's let's move up from the earthquake. Uh, we moved back to the city, and what I uh, maybe two weekends, uh, two weekends a month. On a Friday night or a Saturday morning, I don't remember which, I would get on a bus and drive out to visit uh, Harry Jr. Spend the weekend end with him. And one of the things about spending the weekend with Harry Jr. was uh, I love a clean house. And uh, both Harry Jr. and myself were involved in it. I, I hated it, but yet uh, twice a month or so I went out there and twice a month, Harry Jr. would come in and visit us. And uh, we, we had a friendship that uh, continued on to the end of the decade, to the uh, late thirties. Uh, in uh, in the late uh, 19, early 1939, or uh, late 1930, or 38 or 39 later, uh, the Stepners separated. Uh, I'm it's a little vague on, on why or what. Uh, but in any event, just uh, they they separated. Uh, Harry Ju Harry Jr. stayed with his his mother, and uh, I'm trying to. It's 1939. That was the San Francisco's World's Fair then in '39, and uh, I guess uh, what had happened is uh, Harry Sr. had custody of uh, Harry Jr. on weekends. Uh, and they decided to go up to see the San Francisco World's Fair. And they invited me to come along. So on, on a Friday night, sometime in 19... 39, we got in, here, in the car with Harry Jr. and we uh, drove north to San Francisco. In those days, there was, there was no Interstate 5. Two ways to get up there were Highway 99 or the coast route. We took Highway 99 because it was actually a little shorter that way as, as it is today. Uh, We we left on a on a Friday night, I think, after school, and we probably drove about three or four hours 
and we were some ways in, in mid valley when we decided to stop and uh, for the night. They, they didn't have a lot of motels at that time. We had sleeping bags with us and some camping gear. So we saw a likely place off, off the highway. It, 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 there was no moon, it was dark as hell. If, if there was no lights, well, you couldn't see much. But anyway, we set up a small, uh, small camp there, laid out our sleeping bags. Uh, it, it was in the spring of 1939. It, uh, it, 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 it wasn't too cold. And we, uh, uh, I don't know whether we started a small fire there. I, I, I know we ate probably sandwiches. I'm not sure what the arrangements were, but we, we got in bed, opened our sleeping bags, got in and went to sleep. And uh, sometime during the night, I don't know if I was dreaming or what, but it seemed there were light, lights flashing around me and I heard uh, the roar of something and I, uh, I was half asleep or full asleep. The, the rumble got louder and louder. There was a very slight movement in the ground. I thought, are, are, are we having an earthquake? And I was just about to you know, sit up and wonder when all of a sudden I hear a big wham and boom. We had camped next to the railroad tracks. We were maybe, we were less than 10 feet away from the track. And just imagine a steam locomotive maybe going 40, 50, 60 miles an hour coming down the road and it flashed past us. Needless to say, we all woke up. Uh, <laughs> and, that, and that was the high point of the trip. Uh, the, the train went past and we eventually went back to sleep. And that, that was the high point of that trip. Uh, not the World's Fair itself, right? Yeah, Not the yeah, World's Fair itself. Yeah, the, the fair was held on Treasure Island. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So uh, later in 1939, I I guess uh, I guess uh, Ivma got her divorce from Harry, and she decided. To move back to Chicago, and uh, I I remember Harry Jr. and I saying goodbye, and uh, that was the end of it. We had a, we had a short mail mail exchange of of letters after that, uh, and uh, all of a sudden the mail stopped. He I uh, I would have continued the friendship, I think, but uh, eventually we lost contact. Uh, I do know he went in the army. I, I I don't know whether he was drafted. I don't know what what happened to him. Uh, let's let's re go go back just a little bit. He, he joined the Boy Scouts and uh, he was quite an advocate of it. And uh, uh, when he joined, I remember he asked me, why don't you join? This is great. There's a lot of people to meet and all that. And uh, so I, I found out that there, there was a local uh, scout troop that met in a church on the corner on the northwest corner of 67th and Vermont, uh, just half a block actually from where we were. And uh, I, I remember one night I went I went down there and uh, found out about, I, I joined, what what do they call it? You're a, you're a cub or a... a, a Your troop is huh? it, uh, at that age, is it a troop? Your Boy Scout troop? A Boy Scout troop, yeah. Troop. 
Yeah, what are you called? Uh, tenderfoot. You're a tenderfoot. You're, okay. Yeah, tenderfoot. That's a bit. I was never a Boy Scout, so I don't remember exactly. Now, a tenderfoot <laughs> is one stage below the lowest stage. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, that night or some days later, when my dad found out, uh, he raised all kinds of hell. He said, that's, that's not a good place to be. Now, how my dad, how he knew that there were some goings on in the, in the Boy Scouts, I don't know. But he wouldn't let me go back again. So I, I, I'd only gone down there for one meeting and I, I, never, I never went back. Apparently my dad knew something that I didn't know. <laughs> and uh, so, so much, uh, so much for Harry Jr. Or he, he, he even changed his name from Harry Stepner to Harry Albury. I, I, I do know that. And we had some contact with Harry Sr. In, in the years that followed, but I, I don't really know uh, what happened to him. What type of stuff did you like to do with uh, Harry? What type of stuff did you do with Harry? What? Like, what type of stuff would you do you and Harry? Oh, well, okay. Uh, some weekends, <laughs> Harry was a uh, kind, of, he was not as conventional as I was. I, I remember uh, one one Christmas. This might have been uh, uh, 1936 or 1937. We might have been 12 or 13 years old. Uh, just before Christmas, uh, I went over there. Uh, Harry Jr. and Harry and Isla, they actually moved to near us at that time. They they were had a place on either I think 60th between between Budlong and Normandy. That was a little a little bit south. They had they had a small corner house, and I I was over at Harry's, and nobody was home. Isla and Harry were both gone, then. and and. Uh, we looked in the window of the garage and there was a bicycle there that Harry Jr. that they bought for Harry Jr. Harry wanted to ride the bike, but uh, couldn't open the garage door. They, they, they didn't have uh, overhead doors and the, the, the doors were just uh, hinged. Uh, vertically hinged, they opened up uh, horizontal. And then they, they would have a, a hasp lock on front to keep them locked. Uh, Harry wanted to ride the bike. So somehow or other, th 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 there was a window in the garage. And I don't know how big it is, but while uh, Harry Jr. was opened the window, got in the garage through the open window, and eventually we got the bike out through the window, and both of us went for a ride on the bike. I don't remember what the consequences of what Harry Jr. did of that thing was. Uh, anyway, we both had a bike. Now, interesting one one Friday, uh, one Friday night, when uh, uh, after we had finished dinner, this was probably in the springtime because it, it was light. Uh, all of a sudden, there's a knock at the door, and Harry Jr. is there. And what happened? Harry Jr. rode the bike the six or seven miles. Uh, from Bell, in, in, in order to get to Bell, let's see, Bell was, Bell was in the east of LA, uh, east of Huntington Park, and uh, 
east of the Goodyear Tire Factory, which is on San Pedro Street, so maybe six or seven miles. But what had happened, uh, he rode his bike over there. We spent the night with us. I, I don't remember what our parents thought of that, but uh, the next day we went back on the bike. I went back with him. I sat on the rack and he, uh, I put my feet forward and we both pedaled. Somehow we both got our feet on the pedals. He sat in the seat. We rode the bike. I sat on the rack. We went back to Bell. I'm, I'm not sure what the consequences of, of that is either. But I know we, I know we did it more than once. I know we did it more than once. Uh, another time I was out there uh, visiting him. We had gone someplace and we're walking back, and we lived on a street called San Luis. It was just uh, across uh, Corona. It was only two blocks from the school. And we walked past a place where they, there was a, a garden growing vegetables. And he saw some vegetables, some peppers or something there. So he pulled one and took a bite of it. He said, hmm, not bad. Want a bite? And I said, sure. And I took a bite and the thing, it, it, it it was a hot pepper. He took a bite and it hit him, but he controlled himself. And he, I guess he figured, well, if I'm going to get bit by this, he's going to get bit too. Then uh, I remember, boy, it, it, it was hot. Uh, that's, that's really all I, I can remember about Harry, Harry Jr. That's great. Okay. Uh, where where can I where can I go from here? Uh, See. So okay. In in school, I uh, I had some problems. Of course, I didn't realize it at the time, but apparently, I had learning problems. Uh, I I was okay. I I could. Uh, I had problems reading, uh, absorbing what I read, but somehow I under understood what I read. If I re reading was a problem, if, if if I read slow enough, I could absorb it. And I remember taking tests. When I would see a test, uh, most of the questions I got, I could remember the answers. And I already figured, well, I, I got an 88 on this. I got a 90, I got a 92. But when I would get the test back and look what I did, I could never understand it. Because on a question I thought I knew the answer to, I marked something else. Uh, uh, apparently I was, uh, uh, what's, I, I, I can't even think of the name of it. Uh, where you you look at things, but you you don't see what's there. You your head interprets it something else. Uh, I I I one I can is never can. Is it the dyslexia that you've mentioned uh, before? Is that is, is it the dyslexia that you're on? dyslexia? Uh, yeah, I would I was never. Uh, I was never formally uh, diagnosed as dys dyslexia, but uh, I, I read about it and all my symptoms said it's what it was. Uh, when, when, when I look at something, when I'm looking at something or reading something that I'm not familiar with, what I see or what I receive is, is not what I see. Uh, as uh, as, as an example, uh, we're driving a car, if I'm driving it down, it's something I'm familiar with, then my head understands it. But if, if, 
I'm I'm going on a freeway and I'm in an area that I'm uh, unfamiliar with. And I'm looking at uh, where are the entered ramp ramp on this freeway, and I see more than two or three signs. Uh, it's it, it it was a complete disaster. When I'm trying to read one sign, I can't do get drive and all that. Uh, it, it was a disaster. Once I saw that a few times. I, I'm okay with something I'm familiar with. Uh, in the comics, there was a story, there was a comic about a dog named Napoleon, and and that was the name of the comic strip. But I, I, when I, I, I never saw it as Napoleon. I saw it as Napoleon, Napon, Napoleon not Napoleon. And that's the way it was with a lot of words I, I would see. Uh, this, in the school, they, they knew I had a, a learning problem. And I remember a lot of times I would stay after class uh, to, uh, I, I don't know what I, what I was doing. And also, I was a stutterer. I used to stutter a lot, uh, trying to, if I read something that was okay, but if I had to mouth it, read it and mouth it, I would stutter. And I couldn't I, I, I could figure it out. Uh, eventually, I learned to, uh, to cope with it. I'm, I'm not sure what I did. Uh, okay, so that's a little bit about me. Now, as I grew up, we we moved around a bit. Uh, we uh, always in the always in the area of, of Vermont and Swanson. Now, uh, there was a streetcar line on Vermont going uh, north and south. Uh, Bud Hoover Street going north and south, which was uh, a block north. Uh, there was also a streetcar line. There were uh, where where there weren't streetcars, there were bus lines. It, it was easy to get around because fare was only uh, a nickel or seven cents, something like that. And I, if I were, didn't ride a bike out to see Harry Jr., I would take a bus out. I'd get on the streetcar go south on the streetcar to Florence Avenue, which was the major north, major east-west uh, street uh, south of us, uh, tr transferred to a bus going north on Florence to uh, Huntington Park. Uh, I forget the name of the main uh, north-south uh, street in Huntington Park, but I would get off Florence, take a a uh, street to gauge, get out on bus and go uh, east on gauge again, and get off on Corona Street and walk to to Harry's house. Yeah. Do you know uh, why? You know why your family moved around so much? Uh, no, 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 no. We. We we lived on uh, in the courts. We moved in and out of the courts a couple times. We, we moved to 67th Street, and then we lived on uh, uh, 57th Street. I remember the address on uh, 67th Street was 1067 67th Street, I think 1067. Uh, at 57th Street, we might have lived at 1057. Uh, well, let's see. That's on the north side of the street. That would be even numbers. So that couldn't be right. Because we lived in, when we lived in that house on 61st Street, I think the address was 839. That was odd number. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, we, we moved back. Uh, in the court there, the Paisleys, the landlord, they had a lived in a house 
at the end of the court. There were maybe 10 uh, units in the court with a sidewalk going down the center. And then at the end, facing the sidewalk, they had a, a house or maybe a, a two or three bedroom home there. Uh, I would like to think that the home in the, this was in 19, in the mid, this was in the early thirties. I don't know when they were built, but I would guess that the home might've been some kind of farm home. And uh, maybe in the, uh, in the early 20th century, there might've been farmland around there and this might've been home for the farmland. And eventually the, uh, uh, they developed it, they put in the court. And what had happened is they decided to expand the court. If you remember that picture we saw, there was a row of garages with a, with a residence on top. Okay, would that area there would, had been occupied by the house. And what they did is they moved the house to an empty lot across the street and they built that their uh, their place on top of garages there and then where the house stood they built uh, uh four or six more courts very much like what existed before except updated a little bit you know we finally moved out of the one of the new courts into the house at uh at 839 or 939 that's the one i I showed you uh, two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, uh, we move moving moving on. Uh, while I was in school, uh, in, in in high school, I took some classes in applied physics. Uh, that's when I really found I had a problem because we started getting into some mathematical problems that required an, an equation in which you had an equation and you would substitute the values that you wanted to process in the equation. And that's when I realized I, I had a real problem with math. Uh, I, I failed utterly at that and I, and I could never understand it because while I was I was trying to figure out an equation uh, the teacher used to call on me uh, when I wasn't looking up at him when he was talking he used to call on me and, and he said but he said Charles my name was Charles incidentally I had two two identities I was Charles Richards at school I was Bob Richards when I got home uh, I got I got used to it, but I could never understand it. Uh, my my mother, in the some ways, was a perpetual liar to me, <clears throat> and I used to ask her, "Why, uh, why am I called Charles?" She, she said, "Well, your name is Charles Robert, and your sister used to always call you Bob." <clears throat> uh, okay, she, she, there was something about she used to tell me that my middle name before it was Robert was Irving, Charles Irving. I'm, I'm not picking Irving out of the air right now. Uh, and we'll talk about my name uh, later. Uh, anyway, uh, in, in applied physics, I just learned, boy, uh, we're uh, uh, next uh, in the eleventh grade. We're going to go. I'm going to go into uh, uh, first uh, unit of high school algebra, and uh, uh, I, I I knew I would fail at that. So in lieu of of algebra, I took two shop classes a day there, auto shop and the sheet metal. 
uh, they were both to affect me later. <laughs> and what happened in the in the sheet metal class, uh, the teacher's name was Mervyn Taylor. And and he was a very a very friendly teacher, uh, a, a good teacher because uh, he treated the students as uh, you you know you you can do this take your time <clears throat> you you can always do a you're doing a good job you can always do a little bit better They're always encouraging you showing you what to do how to use tools and things like that <clears throat> I I learned a lot from Merv Taylor. That was to go with with me for a good part of my uh, younger life. <clears throat> in the in the auto shop, oh, one one year I took print shop, and uh, we had linotype machines, and uh, uh, right away I could I said, uh, boy, you can't in when you're typing you can't uh, look for a key and then punch it. Uh, as I was to learn also later in a typewriter class, uh, big problems. But in, but in the auto shop and she even a class, it was different. I could see what I was doing. I understood what I was doing and uh, I, 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 I was happy there. Now, this was when the country was building up for the war in Europe. War had already been declared. There was a big war in Europe at the time. <clears throat> and we were starting to arm up. And when the President Roosevelt called for 50,000 airplanes a year, which incidentally we achieved uh, 50,000 airplanes a year, all of a sudden they, they needed people. Now, the local sheet metal union in Los Angeles uh, apparently they were encouraging their people to uh, to learn how to uh, work with uh, aircraft sheet aluminum and uh, uh, metal or uh, framing and structures. And uh, what they did, they went out to the to the uh, various high schools in Los Angeles and to put us through a an apprenticeship. <clears throat> <clears throat> in which we learned how to uh, cut sheet metal, cut stringers, longers, and formers, which were parts of an airplane that uh, would make up uh, an airplane, the fuselage, <clears throat> the wings. There were large parts of uh, the structure of an airplane that were uh, had to be worked in uh, <clears throat> Uh, big machinery and jigs, but the other the other things were done by hand. All the riveting and assembly, assembly uh, parts on a jig to assemble something is all done by hand, and so that's what we learned to do, learn to do. And for two semesters, I did that, and I I got a uh, an apprentice's certificate from the local sheet metal union, and I was. <coughs> In uh, uh, let's see, in in the fall of nineteen forty, in the fall of nineteen forty one, just before Pearl Harbor, uh, I was referred to the Douglas Aircraft Company, and uh, I went down there. And I, I by this time I was driving. Uh, I haven't even talked about cars yet, but we'll 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 get to that. I drove down to uh, Douglas. I uh, I saw a uh, uh, one of their hiring. I what, what do you call somebody that hires you? A uh, uh, recruiter. Is that what you're talking well, about? He wasn't a recruiter. A recruiter? He company. He, he he interviewed prospective. HR person. Uh, okay, uh, you, you uh, can't even resources? think of the name. How do you expect me to? Anyway, I was interviewed by. Uh, I wasn't expecting you. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. and uh, I wasn't expecting you to find it. It's okay. Yeah, he asked me a bunch of questions. I I gave him the 
I gave him the right answers all of that. And, and, and they, and they hired me and, uh, uh, and what the arrangement was, I was hired onto the swing shift and, uh, in, in, in the fall of 1941, this might've been in October or November of 1941. And what I was going to do, I was going to work the swing shift there. I, I went to school now from 7.30 in the morning until 11 o'clock. I, I only went to, seven, or was it 12? I only went to, to four classes. Hold on a minute. It's your mother. Ah. Hi. Actually, say, hold on a minute. Say hello to your mother. Say hello hi, to your mom. I am. I'm, hi, mom. Yeah. Uh, Ryan's interviewing me now. Okay. Well, I just wanted to tell you that um, Roger had a rush. Um, I'm not sure what time we'll be there. It might be lunchtime. It might be after lunch. That, that's okay. That's okay. Okay, well, I'll 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 take care of my own lunch then. Okay, okay, all right, bye. Okay, uh, your mother and dad are going to pick me up uh, at about noon or twelve thirty or something like that. I'll go out, spend the uh, rest of the day with them, and tomorrow we'll go to uh, uh, the Reagan Library. Okay, where were we? You had a, you were getting an, was an after school job or an after uh, okay, okay. I, uh, okay. They hired me and the arrangements was I would go to school in the, in the morning. And uh, in the afternoon, I went to work at Douglas Aircraft Company on the swing shift. And uh, I worked there for, for about a year now. Was that down uh, in Long Beach? Okay, I- Was I that down in Long Beach that they had? Huh? Where, where, where was that at that you went to go work from? Was it down in Long Beach? Long, or, no, or? Santa Monica. Oh, it was in Santa Monica, okay. Yeah, 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 they, they had a big plant there. It's all gone now, it's all gone now, but- At the, uh, at the, at the airport there. At the, yeah, Santa, Santa Monica, Monica airport. airport. Right, okay. right. And I, I worked there uh, from uh, the fall of 1941 to the fall of 1942. Uh, there, there, there. Uh, the job I hired into was assembling the fuselages of uh, of A20. Havocs called the A20B. At the time, I didn't know it, but uh, we had a thousand. We built a fuselage there in Long Beach. And when it was finished, they would put the fuselage on a flatbed truck and take it to Long Beach. And they would put the finish the assembly there. And those planes went to Russia. At, at the time, I didn't know it. But when I looked up on the history of the A20B, there were a thousand of them built. It said uh, uh, the majority of them, about nine tenths of them, of well, nine hundred or so, were, were went to Russia. And said uh, what they would do after they were finished, they would fly them up to Seattle. Then from Seattle, they would fly them to Nome, Alaska. From Nome, not Nome. Uh, Seward, I guess Seward, and then from Seward to Siberia, and where they were uh, given to the Russians, and they they went to war, and the war against uh, Germany. Well, when the when the A A twenties uh, were finished, uh, I went on the graveyard shift. Let's see. Oh yeah, 
All right, what happened? I was supposed to graduate from school in the spring of 1941, but now I'm a half a grade behind. So I, I, I didn't get out of school until the winter of 1942, after the war had started. Uh, this, in the meantime, I was 18 years old. I had registered for the draft and uh, with some, some stroke of luck, I got a very low number. Now, <clears throat> now I got a very low number. I was going to say, can we, can we huh? come back to, can we come back okay. to this story? Because okay. I want to, because we're almost up with our hour and. Uh, okay. And I want to come, I, there's a lot of stuff that I want to fill in, like the, just, um, you know, how we transitioned to your high school years and into, uh, you know, into the war. I know there's, we're, we got lots and lots to talk about. So, um, I don't want us to get too ahead of ourselves right now. Yeah, I'm kind of, well, I, get, I, I we're on one subject. I kind of get a, a head on it. What do, what do you want to hear? No, that's fine. What do you want to uh, hear? No, I, I, I think we're, I, I think we're going to have to probably wrap up for today. Yeah, um, yeah. Unless you want to go for a little bit longer. Uh, that's okay. We can go another 15 minutes. I'm okay. I, I, I have nothing else to do. <laughs> If you want to go, before we get into the war and that type of stuff, I, I wouldn't mind coming back. Um, most of what we were talking about is kind of your childhood. And, and I know we're going to transition into kind of, you know, the, the later stuff. So I just kind of want to uh, maybe kind of fill in some of the gaps, uh, you know, through the childhood and such. Um, well, I was kind of curious about, uh, go ahead. About what? I was just kind of curious. I was I was curious about um, hearing a little bit more about like your home life and and um, okay. you know, things All that right. you did as a through childhood. Okay. Where did you go on? Did you guys go on trips very okay. frequently let's, and like let's, like, let's you know, talk that about type of stuff? Life. Okay. Uh, I think I've mentioned before in uh, in uh, home life. Uh, I really never saw much of my dad during the week because when he worked for the Metropolitan Life Insurance Company, sometimes uh, he would leave for work be sometime before I got up and uh, wouldn't get home until just before dinner time. And I think I've re reiterated uh, before how he would come in the house and he'd have a little canvas sack with a uh, full of coins and what he had to do is count the money he got out receiving uh, he received during the day and uh, against what he had in his uh, route book and uh, every every e evening uh, after dinner he would uh, count the money balance his book and so uh, we we really never had much of a life uh, together on on the weekends he used to sleep late and uh we actually really never had much of a father-son relationship uh i did i i i just don't have any remember memories of him helping me with schoolwork or teaching me about life, like a father's supposed to do. Uh, it's it's not that there was a barrier between us. It's just that he was almost never available to do it. Is 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 uh, is my impression. Uh, he worked for the Metropolitan Life Insurance Company maybe for four years until. Late 35, late 34, or only 35. Now, uh, there was a family friend named Paul Chin. That's spelled, I think it was C H I double N. If it was C H I N, 
that mean it was Asian or Chinese, but this was C H I double N. And I suppose the added N on it was to indicate that he was Caucasian. I just, I, at the time, it never occurred to me. Later on, I was to find out that Chin is, a, is an Oriental name, a Chinese name. All right, his name was Paul Chin. And Paul was a real operator. Uh, he had a wife, her name was Lily, and a son named Milton, who was just my age. Uh, somehow, I, I never liked Milton. I didn't have a connection with Milton like I had with Harry Jr. And I always viewed Milton as a uh, as a little com combative, as a uh, not a very friendly guy or whatever. Somehow I was forced to be with Milton. Now, as we grown up, I was kind of like a, I was short and skinny. Uh, when, when I was 12 years old, I weighed maybe a, a 114 or 115 pounds. Uh, I was short. Uh, I, 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 I never got past five foot six. And so uh, when I left high school, I probably weighed 116 pounds. And most of my schoolmates probably weighed 140, 50, 160 pounds. So I was a runt so to speak. Uh, Milton was a little chubby. And uh, uh, my father and the Chins on weekends, they, they used to go out a lot. And uh, guess what? Shirley, in a sense, Shirley and myself became a, ba a babysitter for Milton. And I remember I just used to hate that I just didn't like Milton, and he was forced on me. Uh, now, Paul was an operator. Always had an idea to, uh, to make an extra buck. I, I don't remember what his profession was, but I do know sometimes he used to pass himself off as something that he wasn't. I'm, I'm not sure what what the meaning of, of this was. Uh, so there became a time, apparently, when Paul presented a business opportunity to my dad. And what the business opportunity was to drive a, become a truck driver on an over the route, uh, to drive between Los Angeles and Arizona. Now, I'm, I'm not sure what the business arrangements were then, but I, I do know that somehow they, uh, they got the money to, to buy a truck, a tractor, a tractor and trailer. I'm not sure where the financing for it uh, came. But I suspect it came from a company called the Arizona Pacific truck lines that's that's the name of the truck line that uh, they went to work for and i suspect they got their financing from from them i remember this was in the heart of the depression now this was in the, so my dad quit his job with the metropolitan and dad and paul drove a truck between los angeles and phoenix and or Tucson and points in between. So as, as a result, my dad was gone uh, for the rest of his, his life. He was gone most of the time. So uh, didn't really have much of a father-son relationship. We were still living on 61st Street in, in the house. And in the summer of 1941, we made a break from the neighborhood. Now, in the meantime, 
in late 1935 or 36, uh, my uncle George uh, killed himself. Uh, the cleaning, the shop that he uh, opened up apparently was a complete failure. And as a result, he one day he jumped off a 10 story building in Los Angeles. Uh, the, I was what, 12 or so, I was 13 years old at the time. My memories about what happened then are a little vague. I remember the funeral and uh, a short time after that, Aunt Molly, uh, Dick Stan and Betty, they went back to Denver and uh, that's that's what happened. Uh, okay, uh, I've already talked about Harry Jr. moving back to uh, to uh, Chicago. In the, in 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 the time, uh, I already talked about being in high school and how I went to work for the Douglas Aircraft Company. Incidentally, I made fifty five and a half cents an hour. Oh. Uh, I have an, I have another thing to talk about, about, uh, I always had money and how I got the money. Okay, we have to go back a little bit now to when I was uh, maybe 11 or 12 years old. This might have been in 35 or 30, maybe a little, or maybe I was 10 years old then. I'm, I'm not sure uh, 10 years old would put me on 67th Street. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure of the time frame of this happened, but I do it on, on weekends. I used to uh, go up to the, we had a playground on 61st and Harvard. Now Harvard was halfway between uh, Vermont, between Budlong and the next major thoroughfare that was west, that ran east to west. And I'm not sure what the, maybe it was Harvard Street. Harvard Street was a playground in which they had a clubhouse. They had, uh, uh, there was not much, there was no soccer being played then, but they were playing baseball, was playing softball. So every Saturday, I used to go up there and I would play softball. I was, now I was small and I was not very good at it. Most of the guys were bigger, but uh, I'd go up there every week, uh, had a bunch of friends and all that. And then I, rem I remember one day uh, we had finished the game and we were just sitting around and talking when a guy came up to us and said, uh, how'd you like to make a dime? Now, a dime was a lot of money then, so to speak. And what he wanted, uh, most of the guys ignore, ignored him. Uh, I, don't, I don't know why, but me and, and a few others showed interest in it. And what we were to do uh, were to pass bills, which was a little pamphlet advertising a company, a business, a something like that to houses. and. What we had to do was take this little bill or advertisement, and if there was a pull door, we had to stick it in the door. If there was no screen door or any place to stick it like that, we had to somehow stick it on there so that when they opened the door, they would see it. And uh, we had a couple hundred uh, to pass, and it, it would take us a couple of hours of work to do that, but it, but it was a dime. And uh, we, we, we now had something to do on Saturday and I would earn a dime. And I, would, I was asking for extra work. Actually, the work that uh, I was making, eventually I started making 20 cents uh, a week. I didn't, I didn't always work every week, but now, I was, I was getting money that uh, when I turned it into pennies, 
I had a pocket full of money, pennies and nickels. I started accumulating money. Uh, when we, we still went to the show on Saturdays, I used my old money. And uh, then one day, now we had a local newspaper, it was called a throwaway, called the Southwest Wave. And it was delivered four days a week. Saturdays, Mondays, Saturday, uh, let's see, Saturday, Tuesday, and Thursday. It was four days a week. I, I forget which days they were. And uh, I, I went down there to see about a route. Now, what, what they wanted was somebody to live in the area where they had an open route but they wanted to hire somebody and there was no open route. So the first couple of times I, I went down there, it was no go. And I went down there one time, whoops, all of a sudden the area I lived in was open and the area was from Slauson West to uh, 62nd or 63rd Street and Vermont uh, West to Hoover Street, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's eight or ten houses. All, all together, there were about three hundred. No, I'll, I'll take that back. Not three hundred. Maybe two packs of paper. Maybe a hundred houses all together. Maybe a hundred. Now the way the Southwest Wave worked. They didn't pay us for delivering the paper. They made their money through advertising. But what we had to do was once a month, go around to a hundred houses and collect a dime for the, uh, for the, uh, the 16 some odd pages, papers they would get a month. Uh, they hired me. And the, and, and the way it would work is that uh, they would have a truck deliver two bundles of papers of 50 papers each, two bundles. And they would drop it off in front of a store between 61st uh, or 60th and 59th on the west uh, the east side of the street. I know it was in front of a shop there, which was a beauty shop in which they sold a lot of beauty stuff for women. I rem I would be there waiting for the papers to come and I would look and see what they have in the, in the shop windows. I would remember that. Now, what I had was they had a, a bag to hold papers. Uh, he, he, you would put the papers in the bag, 25 in the front, 25 in the back, and you put it over your head so you had papers in front of you and back of it. And the papers were heavy. Now, remember, I weighed 115 pounds, and I was probably carrying 20 or uh, 20 pounds of, of papers. Uh, I, I, I did it four mornings a week. For a, for a couple of years, I would get up, I would get up at 5.30 or 6 o'clock and I had to do this before school. And then in the evenings, uh, twice uh, a day in the evenings, I go around to every house, collect a dime. Uh, it was not a subscription. Uh, some, uh, most people said no. I would probably collect from maybe 25% of the 25 or 30 percent of the people. So which means I was making two and a half or three dollars a month. Uh, now I was not only collecting coin in my pocket, but I was collecting dollar bills in my billfold. Okay. This might have gone on for uh, two years because I was thir maybe 13 or 14 until I, I finally got a job. Uh, delivering uh, the, the, the examiner, the morning examiner. Uh, now this was by, by 
subscription only. And I am took over a route that had about 50 newspapers instead of the of the hundred. I did this by bike. And when I got up, I had to get up a half hour earlier. And I would go up on it, get on my bike, get up early in the morning, it's still dark, get on my bike, go up to the office on Hoover Street and 63rd or 64th and uh, sometimes the papers were there when I got there sometimes I had to wait for them and when the papers got there I would I would buy a a uh, what were the papers three cents or a nickel I, I forget what I would buy the papers and uh, I would uh, collect from the subscribers. Uh, I would go, I had to collect it from the, I had about 50 papers to deliver, so I had 50 customers. It's a little, to, my memory's a little vague uh, doing it, but uh, uh, actually I was, I was making about uh, $20 a month on that. I, I don't, don't remember what there's, uh, subscription price was the uh, the papers were either three cents or a nickel. I can't remember what. Uh, I'm, 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 <clears throat> the difference was what I collected against what I paid for the papers. But uh, I was making 15, 18, 20 dollars a, a month of that, uh, about 70 or 80 cents a day. And then now, now I, I, I had some real money. And I remember one day going down to Pep Boys and uh, walked in. I saw a, uh, a bike a, a bike that I, uh, I liked. And uh, I went down and bought a bike there. I uh, walked down there and rode it home. So, so now, I, now, I, I, now I had a, a nice bike to deliver my papers on. And then, now, the closest my dad ever came was in helping me with that because now I had, in this day, I had rain to contend with when I was working with the Southwest Wave. Uh, we, we had a lot of rain in the winter. I, I had a, uh, what's these Mexican things? The, they would, would they call them now? Poncho. They, huh? Uh, yeah. Poncho. I, I had a poncho. I delivered uh, the Southwest way with a poncho. Uh, I never had an opportunity to uh, put uh, cover the papers and protect them from the water, the wave. If they got wet, they got wet. But with the examiner, the people were paying for a paper. It was different. We had a rainy morning, so I had to put on my poncho, my uh, rain gear and all that. I would uh, bike in the I deliver papers in the water. And I, I remember my dad, uh, the first night it rained, uh, we got out and we went to the store and he, he bought me a poncho. I got uh, waterproof pants on, a uh, uh, rain hat and all that, uh, really fixed up. He really helped me at that and he paid for it. And uh, I, I, I remember that. But I also, you know, you, you work on that, you gotta work in the rain. Okay, so uh, I, I did that. I, I was about 17 years old. And then uh, one day, uh, coming home, uh, after school, I used to walk. Uh, school was up on San Pedro, which was uh, southeast of where I lived. Ordinarily, I had to, to get to school, I had to take a uh, streetcar. Uh, south again to Florence Avenue, Florence east to San Pedro Street. The school was on uh, San Pedro south of Florence. That was Fremont High School. Uh, then when I got the bike, I rode a bike to school. I remember I bought a, a bike lock and a and a, a a chain to lock it to the bike rack. So uh, people wouldn't steal bikes. 
anyway, for one one day I was riding uh, the bike home, go down Florence Avenue, and I go past a used car lot, and I see this this red and yellow. I, I I thought I thought it was a model B Ford. This this was in uh, 1939, something like that. Anyway, I stopped and looked at the car. The price on it was sixty nine dollars. Well, actually, by this time, I had accumulated maybe. 80, I, I had a savings to go, maybe $80. I, I had a lot of money, but the price was $69. Whoops, I got, a, I got enough money, money to buy this. Now, let me, let me go back. Uh, I was also- I'm actually gonna stop you there though. Actually, Grandpa, oh, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna yeah, stop could, yeah, you there before we get into- uh, because. Now, now we. I don't want to. I can't. I was doing auto shop at school. I got a job at a at a car repair repair place, cleaning auto parts and stuff like that. Uh, let's stop and go again next week. We're gonna, uh, I'm going to stop you there. We can go back to this because I, I have a feeling. I know. I know your interests, and I know uh, where this stuff can lead. So. Okay. Um, All right. But we're gonna. I, but I'm gonna to need to call it. Uh, uh, we'll 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 stop okay. here for today, but we'll pick it up again. Um, I, and yeah, this is great. Uh, I'm actually. I wish I could. I wish I could see that like old bicycle and stuff uh, from the 30s. That would be pretty interesting these days. If <laughs> I, I I have the picture of the car somewhere somewhere. You have the picture of the car though. Uh, next time, next time you can find it for me. Next time, Grandpa. Okay. You can look through your, your you can look through your photos. Okay, all right. Uh, give my best to Anna and the boys. Will do. Okay. And uh, this okay. is great hearing all the stories. There's a you had a, you were you had a lot of stories today. Uh, we uh, I, we made some progress. There's a okay. lot to your life. You have you've lived a long time. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's there. There's more to come. There's Western Union to come, and there's the Douglas Aircraft Company to come. The Douglas Aircraft Company, I kind of awesome. jumped over a couple other jobs. Okay. Okay. All right, no, bye. sounds good. We'll uh, we'll talk again, and uh, I'll see you later. Okay. Thank you, bye. Grandpa.